So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome, Pastor Bill. All right. Thank you, BJ. And I'm really glad that you are watching today and those of you that are downloading this and listening, particularly to the leadership stuff, uh, North Carolina College of Theology, particularly you and all of your satellites, uh, how grateful I am to you and what you do and the ministries you have in front of you. My prayer is that this will be one of the greatest years for you ever. I'm going to talk to you today about a subject that I, I remember the saying a while back. I said, you know, I've never developed that. Uh, it's, uh, I was reading a book the other day by Michael Strahan, who you remember that Michael is, uh, was the retired pro bowler, fantastic ball player and, and um, an announcer. Uh, he, uh, he'd written a book called Wake Up Happy. And he talked about his life in that book. And there was a there was a quote that he made that was a Jack Welch quote that he said he was reminded of called Make Change Before You Have To. And I remember when I read that, that as I read that, that for me reminded me of something years ago that Welch had said, uh, make change before you have to. And so uh, today, while you're watching me there on your satellites, and you're listening to this, I want you to take the note of it and listen carefully because I want to teach you the, the principles about that. So it's, nobody really knows where the exact quote came from, but it's a good strategy for life. It's kind of like the airline pilot. He's flying all the time, and as he's flying, uh, based upon the wind and the current and the altitude and other traffic, he's always having to make adjustments. And in your life, you're going to find that that's what you're going to do. You know, we have this set plan written out, and this is where we think it's going to be. But we're going to encounter a lot of other things in life that may make us have to alter along our course. And so we've got to be willing to do that and flexible enough. And so my hope is that if there's a need for change or if you see a need coming, that we can be prepared for it. I think most change is hard for most people. Uh, that Robert Kennedy said this, 20% of people are against everything 100% of the time. And we, we found that if we've lived long enough that it's true. There's some people that just, they don't know what the change is. They're just against it. They just don't want to change. Uh, I think we don't change for a couple of reasons. One is the fear of the unknown. We're not quite sure what change is going to bring us. So that is a, a reason why we don't proceed. Another is we buy into the illusion of security. We get the idea that everything will always be like it is. And I live more for security than I do for success or significance. Um, in this month's BPL, since we're beginning this new year, it's now 2018, uh, I, this subject, make the changes before you have to, I feel like is relevant for all of us. Uh, it may be in your, in your health. You know, you may have to make some changes in those areas that, that uh, if, you, if you don't make changes in those health now, one day your health will come back and make a change for you so you can get ahead of it. Now, this is kind of the time of year everybody starts New Year's resolutions. It may be the, uh, in your finances. You know, you'll have to make some changes along the way uh, as you go through to be able to be prepared for another day when change will come. You know, inflation is still coming, okay? Uh, taxes will always be there. And so the, the key is how do I prepare for the future to be able to live like I want to live and, and, and do that now in the present? So it, with your finances, with your health, You'll make some changes now that you need to make before those moments come that you have to make those changes. Uh, it could be in the area of relationships. You know, how you handle relationship changes, I've always found, affects the quality of your life. Uh, you're going to have some relationship changes that come along that you didn't mean from the break or you didn't mean from to, to uh, go astray or, or, or derail, but they did. Or, or maybe they didn't bring as much as you thought they would. And so how you handle those relationship changes. Some people need to make changes in order to be able to experience a better life. Uh, it could be also, I'll give you another two areas. One is an organization or even a church. A lot of you are pastoring churches and, and you're on staff at churches and mission organizations. Um, you may see that if you've leveled off in growth or if you're declining, you're going to need to address that and make some changes now in order to turn things around. If you wait till it's too late, it's going to be too late. Uh, and then there may be the last one I'll say the area is job. If you see that that job is not the job you want or that job that you want to spend your life doing or that job that you're fulfilled at, if you see that that job is a job that you just say, I'm right now, I'm just letting the clock tick, then by all means, start making your change now. Don't wait till later. Make it now. I can honestly say in my own life, I, 
I literally made every change long before I needed to. Long before I needed to. I'd already planned, and then I executed that change. And every change I ever made, I always took a salary decrease. And there was never a time in about seven or eight different jobs before I even wound up in ministry here with BPL. Uh, in every one of those, I went from a better salary to a lesser salary, and on two occasions to zero salary. But it was never about the money. It was always about the opportunity. And if you saw the opportunity and said, this will, this will be better in the long run, then by all means, make the change now. Uh, if you think there's no future, then my advice to you is take charge of your landing right now. Get as long a runway as you can get and get it because it may be coming. So based on that, let's talk about changes, okay? Uh, to improve is to change. Winston Churchill said that. To be perfect is to have changed often. That is, you get better as you go. Someone made this statement. Uh, when you're through changing, you're through. And it's true. There's going to have to be some changes we make. So an organization or a person, I believe, can change without growing, but it cannot grow without changing. So the goal is, is, is I'm going to have to decide how do I grow personally? And personal growth is more important than ever. So I'm going to give you a lot of stuff today. The ultimate test of leadership is this. Can I make the necessary changes when I know I have to? That's what leaders do. Followers many times stop step back and say, until they tell me, until it changes, I'm not going to make a move. A leader says, I can see that train of coming. I know where that's going, or this is my opportunity. And they're willing to get ahead of it on the front end. And that's what leadership really is. It's saying, here's where I am. Here's where I want to be. When do I start making that move? Today. Is tomorrow too late? Probably. Why not today? And that's the way you do it. Now, there's a formula for success within every organization. Um, vision plus ability and motivation and resources and strategy equals change. That's, that's how you make it. And all those things are included. But I'm going to talk to you for, for today about how to change. I've done that so many times in BPL. I've, I've, I've got more lessons on how to make change. So I'm not going to repeat that. I'm going to talk to you this, this, uh, this day about what you're going to feel when you do change. What you're going to go through personally. Because most people won't make a change because of what's going on on the inside. It's fear. And that fear is going to be their lid for the rest of their life. I've always said this over and over. If you're at the same place today you were last year, you wasted your year. If you're at the same place today you were two years ago, you wasted two years. Every day is a gift, and every day is a day to be planning for what you're going to do. I made plans today for the year 2019. I may not be here. It may not. I may not live. 2019 may not come. But if it does, I've already made plans for what's going to happen on that day in my life. And I'm telling you, too many of us just let life happen to us instead of us making life happen for us. So I'm going to give you four stages. Four stages of transition in your, your change that you're going to experience. And you can't get around them. If you know you've got to change, um, here's those four stages. Number one is denial. Now, there's denial, resistance, expiration, execution. I'll come through all of them. Denial. That's when, that's when we know, okay, let's say, let's say the job's running out. Okay, the job's getting out, and we say, well, I'm not going to look. I'm going to wait till they, till they fire me. I'm going to wait until the company goes under. I'm going to wait till the church closes. You know, I see it coming, but I'm just in denial. And we focus on the past, and we deny the reality of the present. You live in a bubble. You know, it's kind of like the, the ship is sinking and just, just clueless. Uh, or we withdraw and do business as usual. Now, if you're leading an organization, if you're leading a church, um, expect this kind of response. When you say, do you see the mess we're in? Do you see why, you know, where we need to change? Most people don't want to admit we need to change. They, they will think of anything that they can change, you know, that's, that's temporal or small, but not themselves. Um, you can't grow unless you're changing. So the, the first step is denial. And I've often said this, we have to see the need before we're open to it. Uh, that, that's why I say, okay, let's say I'm pastoring a church. And those of you I'm talking to right now, that most of you, that's what you do. So 
So you're pastoring a church and you realize this church is dying. Either it's going to close the doors or it's going to fold up uh, or we're going to have to merge or something. Face it now. If you're not the leader that can turn it around, then by all means do them a favor and leave today. Don't wait until you bury it and then decide to leave. Nobody wins that way. So either make the changes you need to make in your own life or in the life of that church, but do not hurt that organization. Whatever you do, make a change. Uh, if you know it's in your life, you know you, you're not going to be at that job, then by all means, tomorrow is too late. Today is the day you step out. Not then, now. Because if it's already coming... I've got a much better chance if I jump out of an airplane to be able to land safely if I have a, 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 a lot of planning time. But if I don't have planning time, then I don't have it. I was reading the other day uh, one guy that had told about how he'd been fired from nine different jobs. And in every job except one, he said, uh, they gave me, like they normally do, a one-week notice. The job will no longer be here. You no longer. He said, so I've left in eight of those. But in one of those... They gave him three months. Now, I've never in my life heard about get three months. But in three months, he knew he was leaving his job. He said, you know what's crazy? He said, I still didn't prepare until the company closed up three months later. He said, it wouldn't have mattered if I'd have had a one-day notice, a one-week notice, or a three-month notice. I just figured out something. He said, the reason it wasn't working for me is because I did not execute. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So the first stage in your transition is denial. No, it's not happening I thought everything was going to be the same this way for the rest of my life. No, it's not, okay? Number two is resistance. Um, here's when people begin to shift to, well, I don't, it ain't right, it's not fair, and they focus on past performance or shift to anger and a sense of loss. Uh, anxiety and depression come in. They begin to feel, I see that I'm losing my job, or I see I'm losing this relationship, uh, and they just go through a lot of depression. Uh, and so it's very natural to, to feel that way, to resist when you go through some types of, uh, of, of, of that kind of trauma. But you've got to learn this. You've got to learn to face it. And if you don't face the challenges that face you, you'll never get ahead in life. So the starting place of leadership is going to be for all of us. Face reality. Um, you know, in, in, in Alcoholics Anonymous, you know one of the first things they say? They say, admit you have a problem. You can't fix a problem that you do not see. You have to see it. You have to feel it. And so if you know you need to make the change, then the first thing along that line is admit it. Number three, expiration. Now, here's the part where you start to breathe. Okay, I see that, the, that we're going to have to close the company. We're going to have to close the church. Or I'm going to have to close my, you know, my job here. I see it. Don't wait for somebody else to do it for you. That, that's the worst, lowest level. That's insulting. I actually had a staff member years ago that I, he needed to go. I knew he needed to go. And he wouldn't pull the trigger. I mean, just wouldn't pull the trigger. And one day I sat with him in the office and said this, you're forcing me to make a decision you don't have the courage to make. I, I, my soul and body, the moment you know, go. I was, I'm going to speak at a church in a few weeks that I had been on staff, and I, learned, I knew in prayer one day I wasn't going to be there forever. So I didn't need tomorrow to go figure out a plan. I walked into the boss's office that very day, he said, where are you going? I said, I don't know, but I'll never take a check from you for the rest of my life because my heart's not here and I'm not going to be here. So that'd be wrong of me. That's called stealing. I'm never going to do that. You've been good to me. You gave me a chance. You gave me an opportunity. I didn't deserve it. You gave it to me. If I don't make it in life, it's not because you didn't give me the chance. It's because I've been riding on you all this time. So I'm gone. And he said, well, what are we going to do? And he made me stay one week and I stayed one week. And we did a, a going away party, and I didn't know where I was going. I had no idea where I was going, but I knew I wasn't staying there. And that's why I say, if you, if you know you're on the wrong street, turn around then at that moment. I turned around. I'm glad I did. Now, the reason I say once you make that decision, something else is going to happen. This third one is expiration. That's when you're going to start realizing, now I need to start exploring my options. Um, what do I do? If it's health, what do I do? I start exercising each day or working out or watching what I eat. If it's relationships, I ask myself the questions, okay, this relationship's not working. Let's explore it. There's a possibility it can work. Is it draining? Is it providing for me a sense of, of, uh, of that I'm accomplishing something or is it 
or is this a relationship that's hurting me? Um, is it getting better? Is it getting worse? And then you start making the changes. The exploration process is that part where now you admit, I'm not going to be here. Let me start exploring my options. That's when you start looking out for where I'm going. If it's a job, that's when you start saying, here's where I'm going to go. Here's what I want to do. And you start looking. And you never look for the perfect one, by the way. Look for something until there's something else that comes along. Don't ever look. For, I worked at a place one time in this city called Buck Ice and Coal. And uh, I was at a time where I knew I was leaving a job and I didn't have one, but I had to have one. I've had a job since I was 13. So, so I went to a place here in our own city called Buck Ice and Coal and said, do you have a job? They said, yeah, you can go back there and shovel coal. And it was, I think it was $2.30 an hour. And so I went back there and I asked the boss for one favor. Can I come earlier? Everybody else shows up at like seven. Can I show up at six and then leave at four? And he said, sure. So I gave him his eight hours, but I showed up earlier and would work, get dirty as could be, then take a quick shower in the afternoons. When I left at four, I was catching other businesses that was still open until five to go to. I was making changes before I had to. And sure enough, got, a, got one in heating and air conditioning and moved from there. But I'd have never done it had I not said, I know I won't be here, so let's make those kind of changes. And that's why I tell you, start now exploring. Where do I want to be? What do I want to do? Where am I going to go? Some of you need to be in a mission field. You're in a church. You need to get on a mission field. Uh, some of you need to be in a teaching role. You're pastoring a church. Go teach. Uh, some of you are not pastoring, but you're on staff. Go pastor. Those of you listening right now, you're in some form of ministry. And I'm just telling you, if that's not where you intend to be or end up at, start moving toward where you want to end and start today. Um, if it's job related, bottom line is this. Uh, life is too short for you to stay if you're going to change. And life's too long for you if you do. You know, if you, if you, if you decide, I'm, I'm not going to make the effort, then it's going to be real long and boring. Uh, Steve Jobs said this. Your time is limited. Don't waste it living somebody else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of other people's opinion drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to act and follow your heart and intuition. You notice that? Have the courage to act, to follow your heart. That's, that, that's the explanation part. Let me give you the last one. The last one is this. Here's what you'll go through. Once you've said, okay, I've gone through denial, surely I'm not having to make a life change. Okay, I am. Now, I've gone through resistance. All right, I understand now. I'm going to be reluctant, resistant. I'm going to fall back on feelings of insecurity, inadequacy. Okay, but now I'm starting to say, okay, let me explore my options. And you're ready to move through that stage. The fourth is execution. Um, that is, now what you do is you focus only on the future. You never look back. You focus only on the future continually and you act on your change. You, you literally pull the trigger and you don't stand on the diving board at another second and keep waiting for that right wave. You act immediately. You act immediately. You say, I'm gonna act, I'm executing. And, and that's called change before you have to. Muhammad Ali said this, he who is not courageous enough to take risk will accomplish nothing in life. And he's right. It's all about risk. Every stage or place you want to go, it's about risk. Andre God said this, man cannot discover new oceans until he's come to the courage to lose sight of this shore. That is, if you're going to see that new ocean, you got to leave sight of this one. You can't keep holding this one and trying to get that one. There's no way to do that. You can't have one foot here, one foot there. Go all in or not at all. Uh, Aristotle said this, you'll never do anything in this world without courage. It's the greatest quality of the mind next to honor. And so what he's saying is exactly right. You got to make a change, take a deep breath and act, do it. Don't wait longer, change before you have to. Now, here's the last thing I'd say as you go out. Okay. I'm talking perhaps to some of you that are, you know, there's changes you've got to make and your fear has prevented you from making it. And the longer you stay there, the worse it is. Okay. By the way, I say this to you at a job. Did you know that if you're 30 years of age, let's say you're 29, 30 years of age, you're at a job that you're miserable at, every day you stay there, you're a fool. Okay, every single day. And here's why. 
The, by the time you get 45 and 50, you, it's going to be a lot harder. The, the market is a lot, lot more difficult then. Uh, you're, and and you're, you're basically ruining your life by waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Just act on that. Act on it. And that's why I say change before you have to. It's the most important lesson, I think. When I, when I saw that and read that, I thought about it. Now, here's, here's the deal you do. Before you go out of where you're leaving, you're leaving that church, you're leaving that job, you're leaving that uh, relationship. Before you go out, this is going to be the key to how successful you are. Change your attitude before you go out. Change your attitude before you go out. That, what I mean by that is, view everybody that ever helped you in the past as a gift from God. And be grateful. View everybody that ever helped you in the past. See, a lot of people go out like this. I'm mad at them and I'm having to leave and I don't like them. They gave you the job. They gave you the relationship. They gave you the opportunity. I've always said if I left this church and I pastor a great church, but if this church ever wanted me to leave or I ever felt I need to leave, I'm going to walk right up the center aisle and I'm going to wave at everybody and say, it's been wonderful. God bless you. I'm not mad at anybody. They teed me up. I, they blessed me. That old turtle on the fence post, if you saw the turtle up there, you know one thing, somebody put it there, it didn't get there by itself. The worst thing you can do when you leave a job is to, is to poison about everybody else. They didn't do this. They didn't give me that. We're not entitled to nothing in this world. So when you leave, let's say it's a, it's a church. If it's a bad church, I don't care how bad it is. You're a bad your bad church could turn out to be the biggest blessing of your life when you look back. You may have learned more and grown more there. So as you go out, thank God for what you had. I am so grateful to God for that. Um, if, you, if you work for a bad boss and, and your boss, maybe your boss doesn't give you any pay, maybe no recognition, no freedom. Your boss doesn't give you resources. Your boss is a horrible boss. Um, even when you leave, thank God for your boss. He may turn out to be the best boss you ever had in your life in the long run. You may look back and say, you know, that I learned more. I grew more. I learned how to be a better person and a better boss. But the secret is if when you change and you make the change before you have to, also make sure you close that door very honorably. The way you leave a place is how God opens a place in the future. Um, you're... Your, your bad relationship. Maybe I'm in a relationship with somebody and it's just not working. You don't have to be enemies. I broke up with several girls in my life that, that I dated and we're better friends today than we were even then. You don't, have to, you don't have to burn every bridge. You say, thank you. It was wonderful. We enjoyed one another. It was a great relationship. You helped me. I helped you. Add value and then say, but it's not going any further. I'm not doing you any benefit. And be willing to walk away from relationships or develop new relationships without burning those. You don't have to have an enemy. You don't have to make everything bad to leave. Some people create this image of it's so terrible and that's their energy to move forward. It doesn't have to be. Show honor on the way out. Say thank you. Um, I, uh, I just, I've never understood that part. I've always said, look, if, if, I'm, you know, if I'm leaving a, a place, and thank you for what you did while I was there. When a member tells me they're leaving a church, and you, those of you in ministry get this, when they say I'm leaving, just say thank you for being here during the time you're here. You don't have to, you don't have to be ugly to them. Always go out with honor. Take the high road. And so I say make the change before you have to, and then as you make that change, be the most grateful human being that you can be because everything anybody ever gave you was a gift. I am... Um, I have personal goals of wanting to be able to thank everybody that's ever helped me. And it's going to cost me a lot, and it's a big experience. But I'm more excited about wanting to go back over the, this year. One of my goals is how do I add value to everybody that ever added value to me? And I'm writing a list right now to do that. And I'm finding out that that's, for me, healthy. I hope you'll try the same for yourself. So get ready. Make the change before you have to. And if you'll do it right, you'll look back and say, I'm so glad I did it at the right time, in the right way, with the right spirit, and left things well. That's the way I say to get ahead. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for everyone that is watching. I pray today, Lord, that you'll help us. We know the changes that, that are coming. We, we know it. We, we understand that, God. We, we don't need more information. We just need courage, and we need wisdom. 
And so, Father, I pray that every one of those listening today that have got to make changes in their life that they know they have to make, I pray, God, that you'll help them to act on what they know and not just be hearers, but doers of good information so their life can live out the dreams that you put in their heart. And for that, we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.